Hello from Slide Nerd and hello from Weaves. What's up, folks? How are you guys doing now? In this vid, I'm going to talk about how to handle button clicks when your user clicks the button on your Android device, which is made inside your app. Exactly how do you go ahead and handle that? So, first, let me actually talk about events. You guys have heard this word if you're from AWT or Swing background or from Midlet or your Blackberry. Wherever you are, you probably heard about this word events and you're probably scared if you have not done this before. It's very simple. Let me show you. There's a guy over here. You have this door, the guy tries to ring the doorbell, the circuit gets activated, the doorbell rings, someone actually listens to this doorbell. Now remember, the doorbell rings, everybody hears it, but there's only one person or maybe two people who actually go ahead and open the door for you, right? So the same way events work in Android, let me show you what I mean. You have the button over here, you click the button, there's an event which gets triggered. This event is received by your Android operating system and that is gonna tell everybody like a doorbell that is gonna ring and tell everyone but those who are interested are the ones who are gonna actually respond back and that is the listener now this listener is a person who's actually interested in uh, listening to your event after the button click and this is the guy who's gonna respond back so there are many types of listeners and stuff let me go ahead and talk about how your button works in the first way so here you have this button over here as you can see on my emulator I have the screenshot of a button which says click here you have a wrap content and wrap content layout width and height I've discussed about this width and height in my previous widths. you can go ahead and check them out then there's this Android text which is click here actually I should not be putting this text over here it should be inside the file called strings.xml because that's the way you can make stuff uh, portable and you can arrange for resource internationalization if you guys ever heard about that word uh, then there's the button tag in XML and this ID now this ID is the way your XML code is linked to your Java that is inside Java if you want to access the same button then you use this ID field alright. Now if you see this this Android on click attribute which says do something now this is the way this is one of the ways which you can respond to button clicks. So what happens is you're telling your XML code that when the button is clicked then this do something should happen. Now what is this do something? It's nothing but it's actually a method which takes a view argument alright it's public void do something and this is inside your java file which is your main activity dot java or whatever it is so let me go ahead in eclipse and show you exactly how this works so here in eclipse i have nothing just a plain empty dumb screen i'm gonna make a new project over here by saying new android application project you guys are too familiar with this in the next vid i'm not going to talk about how to make a project i'm going to jump directly inside the code so this is the last vid where i'm actually showing you how this is done all right so there you go slide dot waves the package name uh, I'm gonna take the minimum as honeycomb and click next no need for a custom launcher click next next and main activity click finish so now as you guys can see this is the graphical layout where I'm seeing this hello world written over here I'm gonna click on that remove that by clicking delete I'm gonna put a button over here I can just drag it and drop it and you can see in the activity main there's everything created for us right the width the height uh, I'm gonna remove the relative layout and put a linear layout over here because we are happy with linear we don't need relative for now we'll see relative later this is the simplest layout of all alright so at this point everything is filtered according to what I need so I'm gonna put an orientation for my linear layout by calling it uh, horizontal that means all the co components will be placed next to each other horizontally on the screen as long as they have space otherwise they'll go to the next row below so there that's done yeah the ID over here alright so now let's see if we go ahead and run this on the emulator let's see what happens I'm gonna go ahead up at the top select the project on the left side first then click run at the top so now if you guys notice your button test app has started over here I click the button actually nothing happens right you click the button you're ringing the doorbell and there is nobody inside to actually hear it out here I mean this is the first method here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use an XML attribute called on click here what you need to tell is you need to tell the name of the method that is going to respond to the button click it's like 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 I said everybody hears the doorbell but there's only one guy who actually responds to it so you need to tell the name of that guy so I'm gonna say do something over here so I'm gonna go inside your Java code source files I remove this so here what I can do is I can say public void do something now it's very mandatory that you put a view inside all right now why do you need this view this is one of the questions which people wonder if you're a beginner this view is what tells which button was clicked if there are multiple buttons then you need to know which one was clicked right so here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply use a log.d I'm not gonna do anything complicated over here I'm gonna say log.d if you guys remember I've talked about what a log d is in the pre previous bits I'm gonna give it a tag called whips message saying button was clicked all right nothing great I go to my log cat again let me go and run this select this over here click run on the emulator 
So now if you guys notice, the emulator is started up, there's a lock cat over here. If I click the button now, it says button was clicked over here, you guys can see that. Again I click the button, button was clicked, button was clicked, button was clicked and so on, right? So every time the button is clicked, what happens is here, your Android on click, it's telling that, hey, go and call do something. Your Android operating system calls this function do something, which is over here. And inside this, this statement runs and you see this on the lock cat, right? So now let me go ahead and talk about what happens when there are multiple buttons because let me go back to the presentation. So here we have the same case. Uh, there's a click here button. There's an another button over here. All right. The same do something method remains as it is. But what happens is if you see there's an Android ID, ID button one, and there's an Android ID, ID button two, there are two buttons and they are both using the same do something as an event. Now, how will you differentiate between them? Which button was clicked? So let's go ahead and see this in Eclipse, how we do this. So first things first, let me go to my layout and add that additional button. So let me put another button right near it. Call this another button, edit text. So now if you go to your visual uh, XML layout, uh, the XML view, you can see that there is a button over here. There's another button, this ID button two, your Android uh, Eclipse has actu actually given the ID automatically, all right? So this is not recommended. Remember, put those things inside strings.xml because I'm doing it right now just for the sake of simplicity. I don't want to confuse stuff. So now uh, let me go ahead and actually run this. Both of them are going to call do something. We need to define the same piece of code over here because remember this button is responding, but this is not responding yet, right? If you click, nothing is going to happen. So we need to do the same thing over here, do something. So here in main, main activity, nothing has changed so far, right? We need to distinguish between both of them. We'll see how to do that first. Let's go ahead and run this and just check if both the buttons are working perfectly. So here I have both my buttons. Now if I click on button, it says button was clicked. Another button, again, button was clicked. So there is no way of actually distinguishing which button was clicked, right? So let me go ahead and uh, see what that is. There's something called v.getID, all right? Now this is going to exactly give us the ID of that button which was clicked. So let's go and use this and actually log this out and see what this gives. All right, I'm gonna put this inside log cat and this button was clicked. So now let me go ahead and save again. So now if you guys see, if I click the button over here, it says 2131237200, blah, 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 button was clicked. If I click another button, there's a different number. You can see that 721, 720 above. So these numbers, what the hell do we do with them? So what we do is we do something like this. If you remember, we can have the v.getID and we compare that with r.id.id say button one now this number is the same number which you saw two three zero one two whatever so if we actually compare these we can determine which button was clicked all right so here in this case what i'm gonna say is the first button was clicked else if the id equals equals r dot id dot button two now remember if you're wondering what is all this r stuff don't worry too much about it i'm gonna talk about resources and detail as we go ahead for now all you need to remember is whatever you create in xml over here and you have this button one at the rate ID something it gets converted into something called r dot id dot something right the same name button one is over here as you guys can notice so here I'm gonna go ahead and log this again this time I'm gonna say second button was clicked so let me go and save this and take this up run it again so now again we have things running if I click on button it says first button was clicked another button second button was clicked so you guys can see that clearly right it's pretty simple if you like what you saw please subscribe to my channel comment and let me know what you think about this Thanks for watching. In the next vid, I'm going to talk about uh, view.onclick listener. So I'll catch you guys in the next vid. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching.